Hey you guys, hey you guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your girl Danny Royal from dannyroyal.com. And um first of all, I'm going to give you guys a warning. It is on a late night. Um normally I'm up uh driving or something like that, but God told me to rest this morning to well today. So I'm I'm trying to be obedient, okay? Um also um, I'm a mom first and I have Hannah Banana, <laughs> you know, uh, sleeping with me. So yeah, we, sh right now she's in my room. We don't even share. She takes over, but I want to, um, give you guys this word that Yah um, gave me in my meditation and my prayer on yesterday. And, um, it's so crazy because I was supposed to do it earlier and I was supposed to do it around this time, that time. But God has like the perfect time. Um, if it's your first time here, welcome. If it's not your first time here, you already know what you're going to get. A little bit of love, a little bit of life, a little bit of joy, some peace of mind, some truth, um, some crowning up. And you're going to get all things Danny Royal. It's on a late night, so part of my shirt, like I'm clearly, you know. You get what you get, and you don't get upset. <laughs> Just look at, uh, listen to the word. Don't look at the outer appearance, please. <laughs> okay, so first I want to start off with the vision that God gave me. So in my meditation and prayer, he gave me, I, well, this is actually a twofold vision. So I actually was like, sitting in my bathtub and I was just like, you know, um, just chilling and I, I had, you know, um, you know, just in a relaxed state. And I saw at the president's table or desk in the white house, a man, it was a white Caucasian guy, um, who had a bald head and he had on all black and he had glasses on. And he had cards and he basically laid the cards out like this. You know how like you got the deck and you just like spread it out, just evenly spread it out. And then I saw him flip the cards back the other way. And then I heard him say, I got to reverse the curse. I got to reverse the curse. And so after that, I was like, God, why would you give me that vision? And in my mind, I'm like, okay. I got to I got to get the word out to the people, you know, um because he let me know that there was witchcraft going on in the White House. And I said, "Okay, God, okay." But he wasn't ready for me re to release the word. Yeah, he wasn't ready for me to release the word. So, that was like about that was a few days ago God gave me that. Um then after that, I actually got a Another vision, which was which was yesterday, because I'm recording this vi video the next day, because um, even though it's early, it's still so next day. Follow me. Um, in my meditation and in, in my prayer, I saw President Trump's face. I saw his face on one side, and then it was like a split vision of the picture in front of me. I saw his face and then I seen a cop car. Um, it, it basically was speeding down the road and it made a turn and it went up as if it was doing a willy. But it was like as if it was in like a chase or something like that. Um, and I seen it on a street that was familiar here in my city. And um, God then let me know in that moment that Trump would be back in office as our president. And he also let me know that there will be, uh, that there will be uh, turbulence in the cities, in the land. And um, I was like, okay, okay. So at the end of that vision, I saw the same man in the White House, his face came across the vision and 
instead of him having glasses on, he was still the same bald guy. He still had on the all black, but his, his, his glasses were off. And in that moment, I was like, God, why, why were you showing me that his glasses were off? And, um, I guess that represents, I'm feeling in my heart that that represents God showing clear vision in this moment because people then saw what they wanted to see when the curse was still going through the process of being worked out. But when God broke the curse, you know, and he had his, he had his way, he let me know that there was clarity you know, so in the year 2020, we were supposed to have clear vision and this, this, that, and the third. But no, the people were deceived. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The people were deceived. And so at the end of that, when Trump was back in office and when Trump was president, there was a turbulence in the land, the turbulence in the cities. But the vision was clear. And um, prior to me having the dream of... I mean, the vision of Trump, I saw an eye, like a, an eye, I saw an eye, and I saw the word hilarious across the eye, and God then let me know that, he then let me know that he, he was going to get the last laugh, and that he had the final say, and that he sees and he knows and all, you know, and so... I wrote this, all of this down. Um, I wrote all of this down. Y'all, when God give me stuff, I just start writing because I, you know, you got to record because some things you might miss and you don't want to miss it. So God let me know that he was going to have the last laugh. And I love, it's so funny how he had the eye and then hilarious. And then at the end of the vision that I saw, um, with Trump, with the turbulence in the land, with the police officers and the sirens going off. And then I saw the man who was in the White House at the president's seat. Um, it was so crazy because he let me know that he was going to have the last laugh. And for those who, who believed that God was going to come through, God is going to show up. But for those who did not believe, believer and unbeliever, God is giving, he's going to give you an opportunity to repent now, or it's going to be something coming to you because God's word is true and his words never return back into him void. And so when God gave me that vision um, on yesterday, he then let me know that it was time to release the word. Um, and I... I, I was like, thank you, Lord, because before it was undone, it wasn't complete. And this time he let me know, hey, I I I I got it. You know, hey, you know, it's time now. And I said, Okay, God, and you know, I'm gonna be obedient. Now, just FYI, I did not post about voting. I did not post about any of these things because I know that voting and you know, who are you voting for? And, this is this, that, and third is a sticky topic for many for different reasons, and that's okay. But for me, I just had to move in silence because that's where y'all had me. Um, and, you know, as he continues to have me move, that's exactly how I'm going to move. So whether it's understood to others, that's null and void. You know, um, what's understood between God and I, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks because it doesn't need to be understood to them you know um but god let me know that that he let me know that he's gonna have the last say and he's gonna have the last laugh and he also let me know that there will be judgment going forth in the land but he's still in control and then God gave me, he gave me James chapter, and, and this is was, this is during the time of my meditation and prayer. He gave me James chapter 4, and I'm going to start there. James chapter 4, 
verse 4 through 9, and then 13 and 14. And I'm going to read, I'm going to read what it says. And it says, Ye adulterers and adulteress, know ye not the friendship of the world is in enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And in that scripture alone, God was letting me know that. Well, let me let me read on for the second. And then it says, Do you think that the scripture saith in vain? The spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy. And then he took me down to the reference scripture below. And he said, and he said, one cannot be, one cannot be both a lover of God and a lover of the world. And so he was letting me know that you have to choose one. You can't do both. You can't like what the, what the world like, love what the world like, love, and, and then expect for God to do what he's going to do. And the thing about it is, in this instance, God was showing me that, you know, um, for all of those people who said that they believed, who, I mean, who, who call themselves believers, true believers, who didn't believe that God was still in control just because president was in office, you, what side are you going to be on? Because it doesn't matter who I put in office. It doesn't matter who I, I allow to lead us. Guess what? I'm still in control. And so he was allowing me to know that, that there were people walking around as spiritual adulterers. And, um, that they were unfaithful to God because they didn't believe or trust that his word was true. And in this time, I know that people even now was, are like, Oh, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden. And God's like, no, I still, I, I still am in control. And so, you know, this, 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 this made me feel so good because he just was mentioning how the people within the church were spiritual adulterers. When that when they're unfaithful to the bride, and God was letting me know that His people, some of some of the people, no, some of the people that call themselves His people, have been unfaithful to the bride because you lost trust at some point in knowing that He was still in control, that He is still in control. But I'm gonna read on to six, verse six. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he said, God resisteth, resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. So for those people who are willing to come forth and say, God, forgive me. I did not trust that your word was true during this time. And this is, this is going to take place, you guys. I did not trust you when, when, when doing the process because I kept hearing and seeing everything from the world that I did not trust and believe that your word was still true, although we had this person in office. Guess what? He still has the final say. But for those people who, who repent and say, God, forgive me, for I knew not what I did. Forgive me, God, for I knew what I did. But I still chose because I had something in my heart towards someone that God placed in position. He will, he, he will grant you grace in a heartbeat because of your heart. And see, when man looks at the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. And whoever this will get to, and I pray it gets to the necessary parties, whoever this word gets to, I need you to understand that God will show you grace. He will show you grace if you come to him in a humble way because Trump will be back in office. And when Trump is back in office, understand that God will have the last laugh. And then he also let me down. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So those people who are double-minded, he said a double-minded man is unstable in all of his way. And God's saying, hey, this is not the time to be double-minded. 
When Trump gets in office, there are going to be so many people who, who turn their heads. There are going to be so many things that goes on. There's going to be so much turbulence within the earth. But I promise you, God is still going to be in control. He's still going to be at, he still sits at the head, at the, at the right hand of the father and his word still never returned to him boy. But then he led me to, oh, I'm going to write, read this. I didn't, I did not, um, okay. I'm, let me, let me finish reading this. So down on to verse nine, it says, be afflicted and mourn. And weep, and let your laughter turn into mourning, and your joy into heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up. So for those people who was so this and that and this and that and all their in their feelings that Trump is so and so such and such, and Trump is so and so such such. No, God's like no. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. And for those who have been humble, remain humble. Don't boast in that time and say, oh, I knew he was going to be in there. And what? No, 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 no. No. Just say, and God's will will be done. And he still will have the final say. And his word never returned back into him void. But then he had me go over to verse 13, still in chapter 4 and 14. And he says, go unto now. It says, go to now. Ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such city and continue their year and buy and sell and get and gain. Whereas ye, whereas ye not, ye, where, I'm sorry, whereas ye know not what shall be on the marrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanish away i'm going to read down to 17 for that ye ought to say if the lord will 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 we shall live and do this or that but now ye rejoice and boast in your boastings all such rejoicing is evil there it therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth not to him is in sin. And so he was letting me know. And I'm going to I'm gonna highlight verse 13 and 14. Because these are the scriptures that stuck out to me. And he said, this one is a fool. He said, for he think he knows something that he doesn't. He presumes he has the resources to control his destiny. For those people who feel like they are in control over there in the government system because they feel like they have the resources to control what's going on in the divine. Oh no, God's going to come to you and I need you to understand that you are a fool according to the word. You are a fool. If you believe that you can control things and make things happen because you say that it happened and you feel like you have what you need to make things happen, you are a fool and God is letting me to, letting me know to tell you that you are a fool. And guess what? He's still going to have the last laugh according to, to James 4, 13 and 14. And don't test my word for it. Read it for yourself. I'm going to read it again because I stumbled over my words a little bit and I want you guys to be clear. Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and, conti and continue there, year, there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Mm. Verse 14, whereas ye know not what be on the marrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appear for a little time and vanishes away. Oh, you fool. Your time is short. Your time will be short. Because God's going to get the last laugh. But then I'm going to go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Read that for yourself. I'm going to go 
to John because he led me to John chapter 4, verse 28, 29, 34, 36, and 37. And so I'm going to start at 28. And it says, The woman then left her water pot and went her away into the city and said to men, Come see a man which told me all things I've ever did. And then it says, Is this not the Christ? God sees and he knows all. He sees and he knows all. There is nothing that you cannot hide. I mean, there is nothing that you can hide from God and he not know about it. And so for those people who don't believe, come see a man. Come try him. Ask God. Go to God for yourself. I promise you, he will reveal himself to you. For those who, who have been believing and knowing that something is shifting, this is confirmation for you. But for those who don't believe, God wants you to know that you are a foolish person. And for those people who believe in the most high, quote unquote, or say they believe and still go up against the man of God or the man that God has in office. Oh, you're going to get God if you don't have a humble heart and you don't humble yourself in this moment. But I need you to understand that God also is saying that I will show my grace to you, but be not double-minded. You can't think that I'm going to do it when you want me to do it. And then when things are not working out for your highest good, so you can see that I'm not going to do it. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his way. I'll read on. So I just read 28 and 29, verse 4 from chapter, I mean, um, yeah, 28, 29, chapter 4 from John. And here is verse 34. Jesus said unto, unto them, My meat is to do the will of my Father and to finish his work. His work will be complete no matter what. No matter what. And guess what? Trump will be in office he will be back in office. Why? Because his assignment is not complete. And God has to fulfill what it is that he's doing within the land. He has to fulfill his word. And guess what? He's going to have the last laugh. Right? I'm going to read down to 36. And he that repeateth, I mean, I'm sorry. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gather fruit unto life eternal that both he that soweth and that he reap may rejoice together and herein is that saying true one soweth and another and another reaps and so god was letting me know that whatever you sow that's what you're going to reap. And for all those people who were sowing that God was going to have the last word and God, not my will, but your, be, your will be done. I take my emotions out of it. I take myself out, out of the equation and I pray and I know that God, you're going to have your way. Guess what? You're going to reap a bountiful harvest of blessings. He said, in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. So, for those who did not believe, he's going to grant you grace if you come humble to him. For those who were faithful through this process, guess what? He's going to bless you bountifully. Because as a man soweth, that will he also reap. But I need you to understand also, for those people who did not believe, who said that they believe, a double-minded man is unstable in all his way. But then I also need you to know that for those people who are in the hierarchy, who think that they have control because they have the technology or they have the, the control to alter things because they want to be in control. Oh, guess what? You are a fool. You are a fool. You are a fool. And God will have the last laugh.
All right. I had to get that word out to you. I know many people may not like me, and that's fine. I don't care. I'm here to do the work of my father. I'm here to do the work of Yah. And he's had me in this spiritual place because there is a shift going on. So I don't really care how somebody feels. I don't really care what somebody thinks. My goal is to get the word out there as God gives it to me. And what I know is obedience is better than sacrifice. And so for those who don't believe, God bless your soul. I'm praying for you. Especially if you say that you quote unquote are a believer. Do you not believe that his word is true? Do you not believe that he can do all but fail? Do you not believe that he is in control? Do you not believe that he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore? Do you not believe? Oh, ye of little faith. What do you stand on? Because you're not standing on the word of God. Because everything that you need is in the word. And outside of it, everything that you need is in the word. If you don't have a prayer life, you, you're not going to be in tune with what's going on. You're just not. But God's going to give you an opportunity before it's too late. This is your opportunity. So for those who have an opportunity, I pray that you get it right. I pray that you repent and ask God to forgive you. Because for putting your mouth on the man of God that he placed in office for his namesake. That he placed in this path for his people. The Bible says repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You're going to be either hot or cold, little warm. He's going to spit you out. You can't do both. And he's not looking for a perfect person. He is looking for a person that's willing to be perfected through him. So you choose. You choose. Ye this day who you going to serve because you can't be on both sides. Choose ye this day who you going to trust because you can't be on both sides. You either going to trust the government or you going to trust God. You either going to trust the polls, the voting polls, or you going to trust God. But you can't do both. You can't serve two masters. Thank you, God, for this word. God, I appreciate all that you do. I appreciate for using me as a vessel to be able to speak unto your people. I pray that this word falls upon the ears that are supposed to hear it most. God, I ask that you use me continually, oh God. Bless me to be the blessing. Continue to speak to me, speak through me, and speak for me. Fight for me, God, and fight with me, oh God. I thank you, God, because you said in your word that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. God, you already told us what we wrestle against. God, you said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So this is not of a natural thing. This is of the spirit, God. And I thank you, O oh God, for the victory, O oh God. The weapons may be formed, but they will not prosper, O oh God. And you and we thank you for the victory. I claim it, I declare it, I speak it in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. If you like this video, give this video a thumbs up. Or give it a thumbs down, that's totally fine. But I'm here to do the work of my father. And don't forget to crown up. I love you guys so much. Once again, I'm your girl, Danny Royer from DannyRoyer.com. And I pray that God continues to have his way. And he will. Because he will get the last laugh. God bless in Jesus' name.